All right. Welcome, everybody. You're listening to the Startup Secrets for Entrepreneurs. I am your host, Shelby Oleschleiger, and our mission here is to help entrepreneurs make a difference and navigate the messy world of startup or relaunch. Join me today where we dig deep with our guests to give you the best concepts and strategies to fast track your business. Today, our special guest is Marianne Wagner. So Marianne, I am really excited to chat with you all about business mindset coaching. This is a very intriguing topic for me. So for everyone listening, please give yourself a bit of an introduction and tell us what you do. Yeah, absolutely. First off, thank you for having me. Of course. And so my, the cliff notes of my story, Mm -hmm. I was a school psychologist um, and I was a total introvert technologically challenged. I had no business starting an online business <laughs> at all, but I needed something that was mine, um, that I could do in my free time. That was just for me. And I decided I would start a blog. This was about 13 years ago. And I didn't know what it was going to look like, or if I was even going to be successful at it or what success even looked like, but I just started uh, creating content and posting back then it was, you had to post four to five times a week to gain any kind of traction. And so I did that for about a year and a half and had maybe three readers, maybe (laughs) after about a year and a half. And it was so much fun. It was great, but you just, I wasn't seeing the ROI. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I was also improving in my voice and my content and my strategy throughout that year and a half. Long story short, I had what we call in the psychology world, a lightning bolt moment when I was driving home from work one day and that was, okay, what you're doing right now isn't working. So what do you need to change? And what I was doing was I was looking at all these other, it was a style blog. I was looking at all these other style bloggers and kind of, you know, we're told success leaves clues. So I was trying to kind of do a lot of what I was seeing them do, but it wasn't working for me because it didn't fit my personality and who my voice and what I wanted to create. So I decided right then in the car, I was like, I'm going to start writing the blog that I want to read that I want to, um, create. So I had this idea to start a weekly feature called moments of the week, uh, where I would share these unpolished, um, snippets from my job as a school psychologist. And, all of a sudden I went from having maybe 25 readers to 2,500 to over a quarter million page views a month. And I started getting representation, um, from a firm. So I started having partnerships with these dream brands like Wayfair, um, Maybelline Adidas. And it was because I was in alignment with who I was and my voice. Mm -hmm. Um, So then I took that newfound, I guess it's a strategy (laughs) really, but I took that newfound focus and then I applied it to my second online business, which was in the network marketing field. And I scaled that to over six figures as well. But that time it took under a year and really quickly, I just noticed looking around me, all these amazing online business owners that fell into two camps. They either had all the confidence in the world and the optimism, but they lacked the strategy and the systems to build a business, or they had all the know-how they had, they took every course, they learned everything. Um, they had all the strategy, but they had no belief in themselves and no self-worth to, be, to think that they could grow an online business. So I tapped it back into my psychologist background and I started doing business mindset coaching for online entrepreneurs to help them combine the mindset and the strategy to, uh, create their first six figure year. Wow. That's quite the story. I, uh, (laughs) just from going from your own experience, I'm sure you learned so much that you're able to take. I want to talk a little bit about kind of what you said, like the power of alignment. So when you made that shift, what were the type of things that you noticed that have helped you and also has have helped your clients? I think deep, I think it really does take us to slow down, to speed up sometimes. And that's hard to do when you have that entrepreneurial chip in your brain, because you want to just go, go, go and take action. And it's also hard in our industry because there's a lot of noise. You just go on Instagram for what, 10 minutes. And all of a sudden you, you think like, Oh, Mm -hmm. I need to learn how to build a killer email funnel. Oh, wait, I need to know how to make a reel. Oh, wait, I need to, there's so many shiny objects 
-hmm. that it's hard to really tap into what kind of business do I want to create? What's my voice? Like, forget about what everyone else is saying, all the experts and the gurus, what makes sense for me? And I think walking through that, especially if you do have someone like a coach to kind of keep you on track and guide you and push you, like challenge you a little bit um, to tease apart, what is it you actually want to create or what have you been told that you should create? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And um, have you found with these people or even with yourself, if you're trying to like reinvent these things, did you find any sort of obstacles or struggles that you had to face to do that? Like to pivot your business or your brand and your voice? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think there's, I mean, there's definitely going to be struggles and obstacles. Um, oh gosh. I think the main one is to, when you first implement something like, for instance, going back to my little, what I called moments of the week, you know, mm-hmm. it was different. It was, it was kind of me sharing my sense of humor, my quirkiness, my, I was being more vulnerable because I wasn't trying to be like anyone else. I was just being me. Mm -hmm. So anytime you put yourself out there, you open yourself up to people being like, Whoa, this is, you know, it's not for them. And I am so grateful that I learned early on in the online business world that in order to actually attract and to grow an audience that's really in alignment with you. Um, you have to repel some people. And so I, I work with a lot of my clients on looking at things like unfollows or unsubscribers as it's kind of a good thing because it means you're really speaking to the ideal client niche that you want. Um, so that's one thing that I think people, when you go through the growing pains, you definitely, you have to learn what to take personal and what to really just it's data and you got to keep pushing forward. Mm -hmm. Know your why and your reason, I guess. Right. Yeah. And with that, can you talk a little bit about that? Just the power of your why and also what your why has been within your businesses. Gosh, the why (laughs) it's hard because I feel like when I was starting out, I mean, number one, I think our why changes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you believe that too, but it changes all the time. When I first started out, I was not a mom. I was literally, I had no idea how much free time I really had on my hands, but my why was I wanted to create something that was mine and something that I could control. The rest of my life was dictated by, you know, a a job and other people making decisions. So this was something I could create. And, um, and then my why it honestly changed when I started my second online business, I was a single mom and I wanted to create something that would, my son has always grown up watching me work and watching me be home with him because I was able to quit my job as a school psychologist. So my why was more just safety and freedom really to be home with him, to travel, to, to live a life that I could design where I got up early in the morning before he woke up Mm -hmm. and I would work and then I could be with him all day. And then I would stay up late at night and work. Um, and it wasn't, it's not glamorous at all, but it was perfect for that window of, of my life to, to have that. Um, and today my why is really, honestly, I, my clients, like it's really, celebrating their wins and seeing how they are pushing themselves through the, the same process that I have been through myself so many times. And I think that's, what's invaluable about, um, certain coaches. You want to look for someone who has walked the walk, not just like read something in a book or they took a course and they have a certification, like someone who has created what you want to create, because they'll be honest with you about the struggles and, what you need to push through. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to, if you're showing up authentically, you're going to be sharing your message. So those people that know that you've gone through it, you know, they are going to relate and resonate with you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And to remind you that it's not a straight line. (laughs) Like it's, it's not, it's, um, there's a reason why people, they, the self-doubt and the comparison and 
um, the things like the, the shiny object syndrome are, they take hold of people who are, who have a great idea and have a great work ethic, but you can get knocked off course and it can be hard to Mm self-correct if you don't really have that true North star that's pulling you back and reminding you to keep going. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, it always brings me back to that metaphor of like the most, most skilled ship or sailor. If they don't know where they're going, they're never going to get there, even yeah. if they're the most equipped for it. But if you don't know where you're going, you're just not going to get there. So when you've been helping your clients, have there been any things that you notice that a lot of people struggle with? And if so, like, how do you help them overcome these obstacles? Yeah. Um, one thing I was about to say with that analogy you just gave is this quote that I love is no one ever floated to the destination that they would have chosen. Mm-hmm. And so you have to be, you know, you can float through your business and you'll be compensated like a floater, like a hobbyist, yeah. or you can have your dialed in mission and you can create a movement where people, you know, it's a career and it's bigger than you. Um, Okay. So problems that I've seen with clients, like that are common, is that what you're asking? Yeah. So gosh, so I, I would say number one is really tapping into their own voice and identity and not overthinking what the reaction is going to be. And I know that's hard to do because when we're creating a brand, it's a personal brand. Everyone has a personal brand especially with online, with social media. Um, and so I try to teach my clients how to grow, like get rid of thinking that Instagram is the end all be all or social media and really how to create a brand with legs. And that you can, you don't need a huge audience. You can use a small audience and grow a six figure business. And that's when you are so clear, like content isn't King. I think clarity is King. And when you're so clear on who it is that you help and how you help, like what problem you solve and you are so present as the face and the name and, and the, the person that they know, like, and trust, I guess, then it's, you don't need a lot of clients usually to really build a a substantial income. Mm -hmm. That's good to know because I, you always hear like everything else where it's like, you need to have so, so much of a clientele for a base. But like you said, if you have those right people, you're able to really help them. So how would you describe your ideal clients? My, <laughs> I know exact. My ideal clients are they're online entrepreneurs who have small audiences and they want to build a consistent six figure income. And they're working toward that first year and they maybe have some things they need to unlearn that they've been taught about like Instagram, or they're now, they they are, have been focused too much on the algorithm, or now they have to create reels and that reels feel out of alignment to them. And they don't want to dance and point at stuff. (laughs) And, um, but they have, they have a strong knowing in their gut that they are meant to, and they can build something pretty incredible. They just don't necessarily know what's the shortcut and how do I make it happen? Um, like in an intelligent, efficient way. Right. Right. And sometimes just some reassurance, you know, I, the mindset part sometimes doesn't mean that someone lacks confidence. You have to have some level of confidence to even start an online business. Like that, you have to have a little kernel inside of you that says, Mm -hmm. I can do this. Otherwise you wouldn't. Right. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just need someone to say, Hey, let's take a deep breath. What you're doing over here. We got to do more of that. You're rocking it. This is, this is good stuff. Mm -hmm. What you're doing over here. Let's just flush it. You don't need to do that. That's wasting your time and your energy. Let's take it off your plate and let's go here. And then all of a sudden it's so amazing how quickly people can really shift, right. Pivot into the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So for your business, how has it been with generating clients since you've been, obviously you've done a couple of different businesses, but now with your coaching, how has it been for yourself with getting your clients that really suit you and helping them as like, if they're with their, you know, if you're doing, um, like courses or podcasts and stuff, like how has that journey been for your clients? 
So I, it's been amazing. It's been, um, I always feel like you never regret tapping into again, what feels aligned for you and making the shift. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes people stay, it's like staying in a relationship that's bad for too long Mm -hmm. (laughs) and you know that you should make a change, but, um, for whatever reason you don't. And I have been lucky that I, I allow myself to make shifts and, and pivots in my career. Um, and I think when people are given that permission, they, it gives them new life. So I have been very lucky that, um, I have a lot of amazing clients that find me either on my own podcast that I have, or on social media or a lot of referrals from people, um, or just like Google SEO is, is great too. Um, but the podcast I would say is probably, probably the number one driver. Um, and the podcast is a great example of something where people are actively looking for solutions to their problems. And it's not like passive consuming, like you would have on TikTok or Instagram. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. I love podcasting for that reason. Like I have my, another one as well. And yeah, it's when you go to search for something, like I search for podcasts and I just type it as if Google almost like the keywords and yeah, you're, it's not, that's actually a good point. It's not just passively consuming. It's actually like, they're trying to find it. And if you can be that provider, you know, then you just got someone that knows you and trusts you, which is incredible. Um, Yeah. I think podcasting is only going to grow. Um, Pinterest is a great, another, another search engine where people are looking, depending on your field, they're looking for solutions to a problem they have. So they're typing in keywords Google, same thing. But when you go to Instagram, I mean, I think gone are the days of hashtags where people are like typing in a hashtag to find a solution. It's not, it's just not really a good efficient use of time. Instagram is great. And Facebook and TikTok is great for, um, brand identity and relationship building to show people you're, you're a real person, but -hmm. you don't need to be spending a lot of your business day work hours doing that content. Yeah. And that's, I think a really good note as well, because I think some business owners or a solopreneur or coaches, I need to post all this and then they do it, but then they're not getting that result because it's yeah. like focusing way too much on that one thing. It takes a lot that? of time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I really was interested in is I saw that you're thinking of writing a book or you're in the process. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yes, I am writing a book. I, I just, it's been something on my mind for a long time. And like a lot of people who think about writing a book or starting a podcast or something big like that, um, we kind of him and haw on it for a little bit, but I kind of came to this conclusion that I don't have to write the book. I just have to write a book and I have my, uh, focus is going to be, um, more like big income, small audience for online entrepreneurs. And it's going to be a shorter book really tactical strategies that you can implement right away. Um, so I am doing that right now. I'm supposed to give, I'm having a baby in about three months. So that's my deadline is to have it done. <laughs> is to have it done in, yeah. Talk about incentive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, um, right now, I guess, you know, you've been growing a lot and stuff. Do you have any plans for your next year? Obviously you're going to be having a kid, but do you have any, as far as your business goals, that you have? Yeah, I think I'm always, I'm always coming up with ideas and plans. Mm -hmm. And obviously they changed a little bit when we found out we were, we were expecting. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I do a lot of one-on-one coaching right now, which I love. Um, but I want to in the next year or so launch a mastermind and more group kind of coaching Mm -hmm. opportunities. Um, because I'm a part of other masterminds and I just love the collaborative, um, approach and and honestly having worked from home now for so long doing the online business world, you, you kind of want community. It can be Mm -hmm. kind of lonely if you're just doing it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I find that as well, because even like before everything kind of shut down, I mean, this is a while ago, but yeah, like you all of a sudden are working at home and you're like, man, you kind of, you miss that, that little bit of connection and the collaboration. Do you find that really important for your work? Is that collaboration even among oh, your, your own clients? It's huge. Collaboration is within our niche. So whatever niche that you're in, um, whether you work with, you know, online entrepreneurs or first time moms or, you know elementary school teachers, whoever your audience is, there's other people who do similar things that you do for that audience. And it's such an underrated, um, I don't want to say strategy, but it is a strategy. It's, it's also just being human, but just reaching out to other people in your niche and collaborate on projects, bring them on your podcast, um, do a masterclass together and share your audiences together because that's a really smart way to expand your audience with the right people. Mm -hmm. For sure. And there's so many options as well, I think, and just always evolving that and getting on other people's thing, I think is so important as well. Yeah. So yeah. And I don't think a lot of people think to do that, but yeah, I think when um, the pandemic happened and a lot of people were sent to go work at home, maybe it sounded glamorous at first. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but then you're like, Oh wait, I now what? <laughs> I'm wearing sweats four days in a row. This is, this is not yeah. a good look. This is not healthy. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Has there been anything within your business that you've overcome or it's something that you faced that was like an unexpected struggle? Oh gosh. I wasn't expecting that question. Oh. That's a good one. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, there's always kind of unexpected things. I would, I would say the most unexpected thing was probably gosh, about a year and a half ago to two, it was around the time actually the pandemic kicked in when I realized that out of the blue, I was feeling, I keep saying the word alignment, but I don't know another word for it. I was feeling out of alignment and out of enthusiasm with what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit shocking in a way, because if you looked at all of the quantitative stats, I mean, I was, you know, a top performer, I was a great income. Like I had all the momentum. I had all the, the shiny stuff. And from the outside, it would be like, you got it made. It's perfect. But in the inside, I was like this, something, something has shifted and I don't know what it is. And, um, I need to make it, I need to make a change. Mm-hmm. And that was, I think every online entrepreneur will hit that little hurdle at some point and we can either ignore it or we can kind of open ourselves up to it. And that was unexpected and difficult, but, um, I think we go through those little things like for a reason. Mm-hmm. And my reason was to bring me to what I'm doing today. Yeah. And it's not always pretty mm-hmm. <laughs> to get there, but it's uh, necessary. Yeah. So how did you uncover that? Cause I know people have that feeling of like that resistance or just something isn't quite, you know, there's just something that isn't feeling right. So how did you actually just dis- like discover that other than just feeling like, well, I just don't feel good. But like, how did you really, you know, come to terms with it? Yeah. So I, it's actually something I work with a lot of my clients. We go through four questions to ask yourself. Mm-hmm. The first question is what's no longer working. Mm-hmm. Like, what's no longer working here. And it could be, um, for some of my clients, it could be as small as like drinking wine during the week is keeping them from going to the next level in their business. It could be something that small, or it could be what's no longer working is me trying to, um, create content five minutes before I'm going to post it. Like something like that could be small, or it could be like in my case, which is what's no longer working is what staying on the path I'm on right now is no longer working. The second question is what have you been unwilling to let go of? So it could be you're unwilling to let go of, um, a feeling of worthiness, uh, or worthlessness. You're unwilling to let go of maybe it is the, the midweek Pinot Noir. I don't know, <laughs> but For me, it was this, um, I've been unwilling to let go of this belief that I was already on my path and things were decided and I'm just going to put my blinders on and head down 
get her done. The third question is, um, what do you fear will happen if you do let go of it? And this is a big one for people that have a, not only a fear of failure, but a fear of success, Mm -hmm. um, which a lot, a lot of online entrepreneurs are high achievers in other aspects of their life. And so the fear of success, what is this going to cost me in other areas of my life? Um, what if I fail? What if I look back and I regret this and I wasted time? That's another one. That's huge is time wasting. Um, I had a, I had a good thing going, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and the fourth and last question is what will happen if you don't let go? Mm. And that's kind of the gut puncher question because it's, it's asking yourself, are you willing to settle? Yeah. Are you with where you are right now? If you just, if you were to look in the future, you know, two years from now, and you're in the same place you are today, how, what, what feelings would you have? And for me, it was a no brainer. It was like, well, I can't like, like if I don't change course, I'm going to, it's going to cost me a lot. So. Yeah. Those are powerful. Very powerful actually. Cause like, especially the last one, if you don't let go, it's like, yeah. Are you, are you going to have regrets of just staying here? Yeah. Cause I feel like a lot of people know that they're like my, one of my favorite saying is like made for more. It's like, you always know that you're just made for this something else. And if you stay here, will you be chances are you're not going to like, everyone can probably answer that and say like that they're, they won't be content staying here, you know? So yeah, definitely something to spark something inside of you to be like, maybe I need to drop the wine or something. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because a lot of people, when I, we go through the exercise, that last question is again, I keep bringing it to relationships, but I mean, if you've been in a bad relationship and you can, what will happen if you don't, if you don't leave? Yeah. Sometimes that's a much more powerful question than anything else you could ask yourself. Mm -hmm. What's it really costing you here? Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's the biggest thing you don't, it's like the cost that you don't even realize it's costing you until you actually look at it. You're like, Oh, this, there's actually a lot of risk. It's like, there's a risk to do something. There's also a risk not to do it. Mm -hmm. So you really need to understand that. I like totally. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for people listening, I'd like to know two more things. One is going to be where they can find you. Also one last piece of advice you'd love to give the listeners. Okay. So, um, my podcast is called get out of your head and grow your online business. Um, and then you can also find me online and at Marion Wagner coaching, or that's the same thing for my Instagram is Marion Wagner coaching. Mm -hmm. And my last little piece of tidbit of thoughts would just be wherever you are in your business right now is exactly where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And whatever it is that you want to create, you can, you can do it there. We live in such an amazing time that we have all these resources. It's a curse and a blessing, but with the right mindset, like dial in your confidence and your, your knowing that you're worthy of building something amazing and bring in the strategy and you'll, you'll take off. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Well, I just want to say thanks so much for joining us on this podcast and sharing some of your wisdom. Definitely some things for me to even think about for myself. So uh, thank you so much for, for coming on. It was fun. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome.